Joining us right now, under absolutely no obligation to do so, other than he's a good guy and he probably knew you were going to be on the show, Katie. So, uh, the, uh, to be honest, you're not the draw here. Uh, 100% not the draw. <laughs> uh, the executive of the year in the National Basketball Association, which based on recent arguments means he's the world executive of the year. <laughs> Uh, the one, the only, the lovely, the talented, Monty McNair. Monty, it's Dave and Katie. Good morning. Definitely here for Katie and not for Dave. So <laughs> Glad Confirm. we cleared that up. Yes. Yeah. How are you, buddy? I'm great. I'm great. It's uh, it's the weird part where I'm excited to have a little time to myself and see the family, but uh, very ready to get this thing going and, and uh, see what we got. So I'm trying to enjoy the downtime, but uh, whenever the season hits, I'll be ready and excited. Well, and every year we talk, when you say see the family, it takes you progressively longer to see the entire family because you keep adding to it. <laughs> so we want to underline how much we appreciate you giving us uh, some time today. Well, this is uh, this is the last edition, so uh, we're okay. we're done it for. Everybody keeps saying, you know, you need to go for one more for, for the basketball team, but uh, my wife is the best hooper right. in the family, so uh, she will round out the starting five, and uh, I'll just be, like usual, sitting on the bench somewhere. Well, let's get right to it then. Uh, yesterday, it was great to see uh, you and Sasha Vizenkov and, and uh, get to hear from him. Uh, the maybe most important question I have about that entire presser, uh, do you have a closet lined with puffy vests? Are they team issue? Are, are they available for purchase? Uh, and if so, could there be a Monty McNair line of puffy vests at a store nearest you uh, coming up very soon? Well, you know, the coaches, they, no more suits, right? They kind of got yeah. their game day attire. Yes. And uh, we used to wear, like, the front office, you'd wear a suit. And we started 0-4 mm -hmm. last year when I was wearing full suit. And uh, then the puffy vest came in, and we were winning. And, uh, you know, credit to Wes Wilcox, who was wearing these these vests for a long time. I'm trying to get the whole front office on board. Uh, and uh, I started with one. I got I had a second one last year, but... I think the closet's getting getting filled with some uh, because, you know, we got to match, you know, each other, the uniform. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got to have our game day vest. So uh, it's 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 growing. Well, Monty, obviously there is no real off season. You know, you are constantly working to improve the scene. I thought one of the great things that Sasha said in his uh, press conference yesterday had to deal with how much he saw you guys while he was playing internationally. And how important is that when you are going over to evaluate players, you're, you're assessing them, but you also want them to see you physically there. I know you guys do a lot of travel. There's a lot of miles between all of you in the front office, but talk about the importance of that in terms of really letting a player know like, Hey, we think you're special. You're important. We want you. Well, especially in this day and age, it's a it's a two way street. Um, you know, these guys, it's a it's a big decision for them uh, whether they're a free agent in the NBA and choosing uh, where they want to play, or somebody like Sasha choosing to come mm -hmm. over to a different country and uh, try his hand in, in the best league in the world. So, um, you know, for us, it's getting to know him. So we feel like you know we can make our decision. Do we want to try and uh, add him to our team? That became a pretty easy. Uh, yes for us and uh, at that point it was you know how do we get to know him make him comfortable so that he can make the best decision for for him and his family and uh, you know we're certainly thrilled that uh, for him that choice was the Kings and uh, I think Kings fans are gonna be pretty thrilled as well let me ask you from a, a just a pure scouting standpoint <clears throat> the difference if any um, beyond the foundations of scouting a player in college and scouting a player in a, a an established foreign league, and then does age, you know, you're scouting a 19-year-old, what could he grow into? You're scouting a 27-year-old, this is what he is. What are some of the differences between scouting a Sasha Vizenkov versus scouting a, a Davion Mitchell? So a couple big differences. One is uh, in college you have the, uh, the benefit of just a huge number of guys that have gone to college, uh, come to the pros, very natural pipeline. Um, so you have a lot of players to compare to um the hard part is you're projecting a 19 20 21 year old uh i don't know what you were doing at that age david <laughs> katie but 
uh, you know, certainly. I was on the uh, right path. Dave was on the wrong, wrong path. path. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it's, but that's the point is, is, uh, you know, a lot of it is projection. And what are these guys going to do as they come into their bodies, come into the NBA, come into money, all those types of things. Uh, oh, internationally, uh, you got somebody like Sasha, he's 27, just turned 28. Um, so we know he's in his, his athletic prime and, uh, what he's going to do physically and, uh, on the court, but, uh, the translation now we have had many more players come over from international, but not quite as many as college. And so trying to find those, those comps, uh, the good thing is these days, you know, he's playing for an international team. He's playing in a domestic league. He's playing in the Euro league, which is the second best league in the world. And, um, so you, you can have more confidence in what those guys are going to do. And we, we certainly know there's a lot of, uh, successful international uh, players coming to the NBA these days, as we've seen from recent finals, MVPs, et cetera. Uh, as we talked to GM Monty McNair, uh, I just want to piggyback that real quick because it has always amazed me. And I mean no disrespect to any of these players, but you could Google uh, NCAA most outstanding player in the final four. And it's it's amazing to me the amount of players that either – didn't make uh, it to the NBA or they did and their NBA careers are just nowhere near as successful or dominant as they are in college. And I've always had such a grand admiration for scouts, for you guys and and doing what you do. How do you know the difference? You know, this guy's killing it in college. How the hell do you know that that's not going to transfer to the NBA, usually with a lot of really uh, a high level of success? Well, yeah, credit to our scouts. These guys uh, have been on the road and watching film for years and years. And um, But it's a fine line. I think part of it is the humility to know that you don't know all of it. Uh, you know, uh, otherwise the, the recent MVP would not have gone in the second round and, mm-hmm. you know, point to a lot of other um, guys who have gone later in the draft or even undrafted that have had successful NBA careers. But on on the flip side, um, you know, we we've seen what it takes to – to win in this league and uh, the characteristics those guys have. And, um, you know, it's a scouts, analysts, what what everybody's doing all year. And as I've said, it's usually a two, three, four year process to get to that point where you got your draft board. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a credit to, to the work that everybody puts in. And, and then they come here and then it's, you know, on them, on the coaches, on the player development staff to get them to the point where they can produce on the NBA floor. It doesn't just stop at the draft. So, um, certainly a hard thing to do, but, uh, at the same time, uh, you know, these guys are so talented, uh, often it stands out and, uh, makes our job just a little bit easier. Monty, I want to ask you a little bit about roster construction, because that is the most difficult thing is to, to balance a roster, right? Because you can go in, you can have the list of needs, the list of people of interest going into free agency, into the off season, all of that, the draft, and then, it's about filling it out, but there's almost been a little bit of a shift from last year to this year. We were pretty thin uh, when you look at bigs last season, and that doesn't appear to be the case anymore. A little bit thinner kind of, um, you know, with the small shooting guards, that kind of thing. What is it like for you? And what do you look at when you go to fill out a roster and how much does what you saw last season dictate kind of the direction you take it in for the following season? Yeah, certainly there's a uh, a part of it that's trying to figure out where we, where you were um, good and where you were not so good last year and try to try to fill some of those holes. Um, you know, at the same time, it's, it's given Coach Brown options. Um, so, you know, we saw uh, in the Minnesota game last year in overtime, I believe Sabonis fouled out and mm-hmm. uh, Trey Lyles goes in and uh, plays the the five and gives us more of a, a shooting threat um, that kind of opens up the lane and we have a great overtime and and win there and you know in the playoffs you know you got to figure out whether you're going to have to match up with Jokic or Draymond Green at the five and um, so just trying to to give coach options give him guys that um, you know can help us win in a variety of areas obviously our top guys are going to play every game but there's going to be other time whether it's injuries matchups. Uh, we've got to have, uh, you know, some variety on the bench for for uh, coach to to point to and say, go go in there and help us win. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's it's not always uh, a perfect uh, system, but 
just trying to do the best we can to bring in guys that um, you know we think can help us and uh, hope that the 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 fit matches up with with what we're we're seeing with our eyes. Kings GM Monty McNair joining us, the reigning executive of the year. I don't get tired of saying that. To go with our reigning coach of the year as well. It's a nice battery to have, uh, Monty. You know, we've talked to you from since the day you got here, and you've had this consistent philosophy of you want to build a sustained winner, a sustained contender, not not in and out. And if we talked a year ago, you know, today, and we did, it was the uh, monkey on the back of a 16-year record playoff drought. Well, congrats. You made it, and you were the three seed, and you got your awards in the front office, and the coach got his awards, and, and Domas and, and De'Aaron were all stars, and all. I mean, it, it's so awesome to see. But now, how's what's the difference in pressure now? What what is the difference going into this year? I imagine it's a different kind of pressure. Yeah, for sure. We we talked last three years about you know the acknowledging the kind of elephant in the room so to speak but trying not to let it affect us too much um uh, now that that's uh finally gone you're right it's a different type of pressure it's the pressure to live up to what we've we've started building um it's going to be tough in the in the west and it, it always is and so um it's not hey we it's not like 48 wins in the three seed is our floor we we got to go earn that um you know we got to go go out there for 82 games and um, you know, put ourselves in position that we can then take the next step, which is, you know, winning a round or two or three in the playoffs. And, um, you know, it's not always going to be a linear path, but um, taking on those those pressures of, you know, we're, we're not going to sneak up on anybody. Uh, we have, what, 11 uh, ESPN TNT games this year, another 11 on NBA TV. So, you know, a quarter of our games are on national TV. Um, you know, I think we really – uh throughout the year and certainly i think the playoffs is where uh you know the casual fan across the country finally saw what we're doing here and so um you know we're, we're no secret anymore and uh now it's a different a different type of pressure a different type of expectation uh to go out and and not just make the playoffs but advance what's there so um you know it's going to be fun i think it's going to be exciting it's going to be tough you know we're going to deal with some adversity along the way whether that's injuries or a losing streak or something like that. Um, last year was, was pretty dreamlike. It's not always going to be like that. And it's, you know, okay, you just, you just, you got a four game losing streak in January. How are you going to pull yourself up uh, and get back, uh, you know, into the playoff picture where you want to be. So we're going to run into those things. And it's about, you know, I think we got the coaching staff. We got the type of player to do that, but um, as always, you got to actually go out and do it. I want to ask you about that, Monty. Obviously, you mentioned that a quarter of the games on national TV. That's something that last year was a little bit of a sticking point for. Uh, I know me personally on the broadcast, even though, yes, I want to broadcast all of our games. I also want the national audience to be aware of what's going on because the narrative about Sacramento has been so dismal now for so long. So, yes, it is going to be so different heading into this season because you're not a surprise anymore. Can you talk a little bit about you know, how you manage that from a roster standpoint, you know, I, I imagine it's a little bit like, you know, you're like a, like a proud papa, right? You've got your kids and you've chosen all these people. You have a special affinity for everyone that you've put on this roster. Um, is there someone last year that was a dark horse that maybe people were not prepared, uh, maybe underestimated a little bit that um, you were very proud of what they did uh, or it surprised you? And then who would that person be this year when you know what more eyes are on this team well starting at the beginning i think the great thing about uh sports and and the nba is uh you win and everything takes care of itself so maybe not as quickly as you would want but um but yeah we won last year and we're going to be on national tv 20 times and back to what uh david asked earlier you know we win and guys like sasha and others want to come play for us mm -hmm. and uh so that that's step one and um you know there were so many guys that stepped up for us last year um you know to, to single one out is hard i mean uh you know keegan coming in uh that's a lot of pressure for for a young man and um to slide into the starting lineup i believe he was the only rookie who ended up starting in the playoffs right that's not a, a natural thing but with this team was built to win and um he's got darren fox and domas sabonis all nba guys around him counting on him 
Uh, you got Kevin Herter, who'd been in the conference finals. Obviously, Harrison Barnes is a champion, and, and that's your starting lineup, and you slide a rookie in there. Um, but then, you know, off the bench, you got somebody like Trey Lyles, a first-round pick. He had kind of bounced around the league uh, to come in here, and I think he set it to, to find a home uh, and play some just huge minutes for us um, down the stretch and into the playoffs. Um, that was huge. I think one guy that Coach Brown has pointed out that just embodies a lot of what he preaches is is Alex Len. So, you know, you're you sit on the bench for a, a huge chunk of the year. Uh we're down to to play in must win games and uh and Alex is the guy out there because he stayed ready and uh whenever you know Mike pointed at him, whether he was expecting it or not in that game, uh he went out and gave all he had. So um, you know, I think for us, uh obviously we brought a lot of the the same guys back, but um you know, you point to a, to a Sasha Vizankov, and uh, I think our, I think our fans have started to watch highlights and embrace a little bit of Sasha. But again, I think the rest of the league is going to, uh, you know, kind of be a, uh, a little behind that. And so seeing him out there and then, you know, the other one that's kind of a change of scenery guy for us is going to be Chris Duarte. And, mm-hmm. yeah. um, you know, excited to see him come in. Obviously, he's played with Sabonis. Um, but, um, you know, so, so much of this league is, is just context dependent. And uh, I think our system and, and uh, the players he's going to be surrounded with will be great here. Monty McNair joining us. And, and so much of this league, they say is copycat and, and, or parallel path. Uh, I'm fond of often saying on the show that uh, uh, there, there are some fun similarities between uh, the Kings and the uh, defending world champions from the defensive minded coach that somehow runs an amazing offense to the, <laughs> the great point guards, to the, the, uh, the centers that are amazing passers to the, the, the tall, lanky, young shooter, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the, the counter to that is that uh, there's that, that defensive stopper in the, uh, in, in the starting lineup still isn't there yet. And that's what pushed them over the top. That's what I say. And I'm, you know, a goofus, as you know, the counter to that is that, well, hold on. Did you see the way this team played sustained defense uh, in the playoffs last year against the golden state warriors? So for you, is that still something you're looking at as a weakness, having that can guard three, four players type of shutdown? Or are you optimistic this year that Coach Brown can really help bring those defensive philosophies that seem people were buying into in the playoffs over an 82, maybe 83 game regular season? Yeah, it's going to have to be both. Um, you know, I think for us, we've talked about we got to, what made us special last year was having the number one offense. And uh, what we need to do is maintain that and improve our defense. And, you know, one easy way to do that, easier way to do that is that you have internal improvement because we know what this group can do offensively, right? I think we saw, like you said, in the playoffs, we saw different times where Keegan could take a big matchup, uh, where De'Aaron would step up his game. Obviously, Harrison Barnes, you know, has has a long history in this league of guarding multiple positions. But, um, you know, can we get – uh, more out of the guys we have at the same time. Um, you know, we, we look to bring in guys like Chris Duarte, uh, who, you know, can, can be a two-way player. And that's, you know, for us, we talk a lot about, we got to find two-way guys. You know, we need our guys to play both ends because, uh, you can't just play one way in this league and expect to win at the highest level. Um, but, uh, you know, at the same time, we, we can't just, uh, you know, plug one hole in and uh let another one open up so we got to continue to to stay maintain and then raise uh levels and areas we're deficient and like you said i think a second year with with coach brown and his defense uh with a lot of the same guys back that continuity that's going to help us um you know we already saw that in the playoffs where if uh you know guys guys continue to buy in do do what's asked of them we'll, we'll see that defensive rating rise when the schedule comes out every year, Monty, I know from a broadcast perspective how I look at it. Like I've I've looked and studied through the end of the calendar year, and that was a little bit depressing for me as it was. You look at the schedule, and listen, the NBA schedule is brutal for everybody. I'm curious, when you looked at the schedule after it came out, what stood out to you? What are things you're like, oh, that's going to be a, a tough road trip or a tough four or five game stretch? Is, is that how you look at it and, and evaluate? Or are you like, all right, let's go. Let it rip. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, I used to say, you know, it's 82 games, you know how they're going to stay. And now it's, I guess it's 80 games and then two that we're not sure of because of the, the yep. new in-season tournament. But, yep. 
you know, it's all the same. And, uh, you know, anytime you got what looks like a tough stretch because of, you know, maybe a bunch of road games or back to backs, that just means you got some more home games or days off coming up. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, the league does a great job. Uh, they continue to do a better job with scheduling, uh, making it as fair as possible. Um, you know, for the most part, there's not going to be big differences. Obviously, we're gonna have to travel a little bit more being uh, far out here on the West Coast. But, uh, you know, I think uh, until they get the what do they call it in Star Trek? The the transporter where you just you know, <laughs> snap your fingers and you're yeah. you're across the country. Uh, yeah. That's not going to change. We have to get on a plane and, and go go east. But um, no, we're um, we, we try not to look too much at that. Uh, we just complain about it when it comes up during the season, and uh, it's just kind of a rite of passage. Well, that uh, seven you know, game trip I looked at, and I was like, oh, and I was like, we got to go to Florida twice. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy to me how they manage the schedule and how they do it. And obviously, it's it's games, it's it's concerts, it's it, the arenas that they all have their their other events that are going on. But yeah, I mean, I think that the interesting part about it is um, the TV schedule also impacts your schedule. Yeah, no, it's uh, and that's a good problem to have. That means yes. some more Thursday <laughs> yeah. nights and Sundays. But yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. On the on the flip side, as long as teams got to come in here to Golden One 40 plus times a year, right. uh, that's going to give us a pretty darn good chance. Let's also remember they serve warm cookies on the plane, so let's just calm down about you the know cake. nothing okay. about travel. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> wrapping up the uh, wrapping up the conversation, I'd like to say goodbye to Kings GM Monty McNair, and I would like to welcome in uh, Princeton, Princeton University educated uh, fantasy football expert. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, you wanted to get to this Monty McVest, and uh, <laughs> Monty as we McVest. as we we talk about the upcoming fantasy football league, it's just a couple minutes here, uh, Monty. Uh, I've I've said it before, and uh, people know you you're a fantasy football guy. I think you. Still Still have a whole website uh, dedicated to fantasy football and the like. Um, really? Yeah, because he's totally not a nerd about fantasy football. He has his own web. I think you didn't you write a program or something that about fantasy football or drafting? Dave, or you're, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how secret. many. I think some Kings fans that still think I, I'm. I don't know, maybe not the biggest nerd out there, but I guess that's. <laughs> I guess that's going away. I, uh, I said that with love. You blew your cover. With love. <laughs> uh, but yes, it's yes. Uh, I, my brother actually uh, also uh, a programmer by trade. So uh, we've done some things to to spice up our league, and uh, it's uh, it makes it it makes it fun uh, when you can go back and and brag about all your uh, victories from uh, 17, 18 years ago. So why <laughs> why not? Are you a, a PPR guy, preferably? Uh, we have points per first down. Uh, so, you know, we, no we try to, we try to, we try to spice it up a little bit, uh, which kind of bridges the gap between PPR and standard. So, uh, you know, you got to get guys that are going to, you know, shockingly help you win games by getting first downs, touchdowns, uh, and not just catches behind the line of scrimmage to give you a free point, Dave. So you got to know more. Oh, here, here's how I can judge the league you gotta generally. Be, you got to be Princeton educated. It's a really good way to judge <laughs> leagues. Monty, give me the, uh. Give me an average every day, any old week final score in your fantasy league. Um, we're, I think we're we're up to an average in like the around ninety uh, oh, these days, oh, okay. eighty five to ninety. Um, but uh, you know, part of that is uh, you know the the first downs, and then uh, I think we got some funky defense stuff that we've thrown in there. But uh, does anyone in uh, in, in yeah. your front office are they in your league, or is this like a completely separate? This is mostly uh, started with mostly some college friends, uh, but you know, over the years we picked up my brothers in it, uh, some high school friends, some friends of friends. So uh, you know, we're we're uh, we're not for the faint of heart. So yeah, we've had some it's people a, quit. Uh, in that, yeah. <laughs> uh, although I would say, as kids and jobs and other things come in, we've we've dialed that back a little bit, and uh, it's uh, it's it's more for fun. Uh, you know, we fit in between diaper changes and. Uh, <laughs> life and doing the day job <laughs> if uh in your league well have you already drafted yet we just had our draft we okay. just had our draft uh i would say i'm a co-favorite with with a couple others so oh, okay yeah if you had uh i assume you didn't if you had the number one pick in that draft who would you have grabbed uh i think christian mccaffrey's probably probably number one this year although justin jefferson who's uh on my squad this year is uh we, we only have one running back, one running back, one flex, not two and a flex. Okay. So running backs may be a little less important. Um, but, uh, you know, the good thing is, uh, you know, your, your friends, as you guys know, from 
from way back ago. They don't, uh-huh. they don't really care what your day job is. And so, no. uh, uh-huh. when I finished, I don't even know 12th out of 16 last year, uh, there was a lot of, wait, you, <laughs> you run an NBA team, you get, paid to uh, do you get paid to do this and you can't beat three quarters of us. Uh-huh. So, uh, a lot of good nature gripping. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm just looking to get my, my third, uh, fancy football championship, and then followed up with uh, my first NBA championship. That would be a great year. Yes. All right, all right, you, uh, all right. Are there punishments in your league? You know, it's a keeper league, and if you get last, you lose your keeper. So, <gasps> oh, uh, it's. Uh, I, I would say our we've had a lot of sentiment in our league that it is more nerve wracking being in the what the the final biggest loser game yeah. than it is being in the championship game. <laughs> yeah. And uh it is funny. uh it's it's it makes it a lot of fun uh to to just see those folks uh you know freaking out over uh text message and email. So uh <laughs> it's been uh it's been a good addition to our league. Last thing for you, you've been very generous with your time. The most important question I'm gonna ask you. Uh the most important question maybe you've gotten all off season. Oh, uh do you consider the NBA champion the world champion? <laughs> uh, Sasha handed, handled this one well. I saw uh, it. Uh, I, I will just say uh, I don't care what they call it, but as long as we're raising the, the Larry <laughs> O'Brien trophy, I will That's be very, talking. very uh, happy at the end of the year. So NBA champion, world champion, uh, just plain champion. Uh, I don't think Kings fans will care. As long as you got the bling on your finger, right? Who cares? That's right. Congratulations to you, and I always like to say because I know you uh, uh, say it all the time. You and and your your staff uh, that award uh, I I know, and, and and you tell me all the time, and anyone else who will listen that 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 is Monty's award, but also all the people that work in and around uh, that work so hard that uh, the the public doesn't uh, necessarily know. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, obviously, uh, Mike Brown, the whole team it was. I, I know in the off season, I, I'm sure you had people coming up to you, thanking you, shaking your hand. It's just a little bit different, uh, as you know, here in Sacramento. And uh, But we're zero and zero now, onward and upward. We look forward to talking to you uh, throughout what I hope is a very, very exciting year, my yeah. friend. Th- well, uh, I, I, I will say Katie's uh, video popped up. Uh, from when we made the playoffs last year, oh. uh, when she got a little emotional, I know uh, Dave, like you were on, Dave was on TV. I think it was the Portland game when we yep, played. He was crying, uh, yeah. and uh, so it was it was really special for uh, for our staff, uh, not just personally, but to see see all that and see the fans, and uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, I hope the next crying we're doing is because we're we're lifting a, an even bigger trophy. So yeah. uh, that's our our task these days. Just for the record, uh, I had jalapeno popcorn I was eating, and I He's wiped lying. my eye. All right. Yeah, that's that what happened. Thanks. Thank Katie's you for your time. Emotional. Thank you for your time. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a woman. I'm naturally <laughs> emotional, babe. Bonnie, uh, thank you. Get out while you can, buddy. Talk to you <laughs> thank soon. you, guys. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Dave. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bonnie. Take care. That is King's GM. He goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's like, I got to go now. <laughs> we'll, take a, <laughs> we'll take a break when we, uh, when we return.